Now I would like to tell you the story about my child. I grew up in the northwest corner of Victoria, commonly known as the Valley. Cold as the Arctic in winter, in summer, hot as in hell itself. We lived on a government research station. We were never allowed to have a dog because of the terrible fear of parasites they could carry and infest you with in such a dynasty centre. But when my younger sister started to grow up, my father finally relented. She got one of the farm dogs to litter. My father said she fit the run of a litter. But as I recall, there was nothing of a rut about it. It was this huge, hairy, lovable mutt. My father would not allow any animals inside, no matter how cuddly or cute they were. That included the cat, <coughs> pet mice, pet lambs, and the dog. A dog, a 200 pound tank, would come charging in the back door as soon as it was open in the morning, carrying on down the hall to my sister's bedroom, jumping up on the bed. He could hear the bed croaking and gro groaning under the strain. I remember thinking the bed would give way any moment under the strain. My father, upon hearing the commotion, would get out of bed and say not very savoury things to the dog. My sister would then have to take it outside, which I'm sure the bed was very grateful for. Now, my father did not like animals inside. It was known sometimes, but was known sometimes to turn a blind eye. And this huge, shaggy, foul carpet of a dog loved to come in and hide under the kitchen table in the dark. As I've mentioned, the dog had very long hair and was fed on a mixture of dry dog food, which contained blood and bone, dried meat pellets, pollen bran mixed with pollard and with um, fat stuff uh, and other things. Uh, given this, this food mixture and the very hot summer, so the hot weather in summer, this long haired dog smelled like a shaggy pile carpet. The people have done unmentionable things in a drunken party a month or so before. Now, considering the bouquet coming from the dog under the table, it was very hard not to be aware of its presence. How the dog remained hidden in the dark confines under the table when it could. But when my father came into the meal table, he would, could not ignore the creeping, pungent odour coming from under the table. Also, the dog was lying right across where he liked at 50 feet. His reaction was to bellow the dog to get outside. Some thing we're all we were all going to deeply regret. Especially my mother, who had a good nose for a fragrance. The dog was especially was a healthy respect for my father and made shuffling noises as an attempt to comply. Slipping and sliding all over the kind My father now called on the dog again and gently uh, made a tone. As you can hear it was attempting to comply. But unfortunately, the dog was excited now. As it happened before, the dog was very excited, and when it was very excited, it would fart furiously. Now, remember the smell of overripe carpet coming from the dog before? Well, now there was a stench that was unbelievable. The smell of overripe shag pile carpet, combined with a bouquet of freshly paladized chocolate ewer, blood and bone, a range of other odors that I could not adequately do justice to in my power of words to describe. <coughs> in other words, it smelled like sulfurous humans of hell were pressuring from under the table. Mother, with a delicate nose, had long since left the dining room uh, in the kitchen and was now laying back to my father for the safety of the lounge room through an open door at a very discreet distance. Now, for myself, I have to say I was deciding whether I was keen or I'm still keen on the lovely roast lamb, baked potatoes, uh, <coughs> mint sauce, etc., etc., which I had to say was one of my favourites. I said it long enough, which I was long enough look forward to when we had a roast. I mean, it, it had a bit lost its appeal, which I have to say for a teenage boy was a remarkable achievement. But then I have to say there was a most remarkable thing. Hearing more blood of the table that one hot summer's day. That was a lunch I'll not forget in a hurry. In fact, I don't think I'll ever forget. It was a most remarkable experience. 